Welcome. We will begin now the press conference. Please have in mind that we do one question per intervention and that you have to identify yourself with the name and the company that you represent. Buenas tardes. Comenzamos la rueda de prensa. Recuerden que hacemos una pregunta por intervención y antes de identificarse con su nombre y el del medio. Hola, Jud. Victorio Calero en directo para Real Madrid Televisión. Eh, seguro que una de las razones para fichar por el club, por el Real Madrid... <laughs> Decía que seguro que una de las razones para fichar por el Real Madrid fue jugar partidos como el de mañana, tan apasionantes. ¿Cuáles son tus sensaciones a un día de esta cita tan decisiva? ¿Nervios? ¿Ilusión? Ilusión, excitación. I'm a little bit ner more nervous for this than the game, to be honest. Um, good evening, everyone, for a start. But uh, yeah, uh, looking forward to the game more than anything. I think, um, like I've said before, these are the games you join a club like Real Madrid for. Um, really excited for for the game, um, and yeah, can't wait to, to just get out and get playing. En el terreno de juego y jugar. Hola, yo soy Eduardo Aguirre del Chiquito. Eh, da la sensación en, en, en ciertas partes en el que el Real Madrid no es favorito. That Real Madrid are not favourites in this game, and that Real Madrid are going to concede four goals. For all those people who don't believe, don't believe in Real Madrid, what would you say to them? Well, you know, when I think everyone spoke a lot about them. You know, they're the treble winners, and rightly so. They're an amazing team, but I think you've got to understand that that's the impression from the outside, um, and that's the kind of feeling from everyone else. You know, I'm, I'm not a gambler. I've never been to the bookies, so I don't know the bets um, and, and, and the favourites and things like that. But I do know that you know we're around Madrid and uh, we're a pretty good team ourselves. We've got some brilliant players, and yeah, I think that that's more kind of external noise, and internally we're really confident and we're. We trust in, in the abilities that we've got in the room and in the change room. Hi, Duke. Ben Ransom from Sky. Um, we saw another one of your teammates get racist abuse at the weekend. First of all, how is Aurelian? Second of all, your experience. Do you feel like this is a, an issue that's getting worse? Oh, yeah. It's mad that you say that. I didn't even know. Um, you, I think in the games where we go away, uh, in La Liga especially, you almost get so used to it that... You know, like I said, I didn't even, I wasn't even aware of the incident, and I think that's a massive problem in itself. You know, um, more's got to be done, uh, whether it's the punishment and how you react to it, or, or how you move proactively to this kind of thing. Uh, I think it's, um, it's a horrible way for a player to have to prepare a get for a game, knowing that they're probably going to get racially abused. It's, uh, it's disgusting. Shouldn't happen. The people in power need to do more. Um, you know, especially with Vinny uh, in, in the recent weeks and well years actually. I think the blame gets shifted more onto him because of maybe his play style and the way he likes to to express himself. And I don't think that's fair. You know, he, the game would miss players like Vinny if he if he decided to kind of take a break because of this kind of thing. Um, more needs to be done to support these kind of players, and it's uh, it's, it's it's sad to hear um, because you know I get to know the lads really well personally, and you know no one deserves that kind of thing. So yeah, it's it's definitely a call out for. For the people who are in charge to uh, to take control, uh, I doubt it will happen, and it's going to be something that I imagine we will still have to just deal with going into games. But um, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where you've just got to play your game and hope that the people look after you, and they're not doing it well enough at the minute. Hola, qué tal, Jud? Hi, Jud. Soy Javier Arraez de la cadena Ser. Desde tu llegada al Real Madrid, incluso ya en Los Ángeles, se vio una irrupción increíble. En Los Ángeles, seis goles, en Champions League, hubo otros cuatro. It's been wonderful, even up to the Valencia game when you were suspended for two games. Did that disrupt your rhythm? Has it influenced the decisions you made in that in those games? Has your has your level dropped a little bit since then? Um, I think, you know, obviously I started the first half of the season really well and even until uh, January, obviously winning the Super Cup and things like that. And I think the main thing that probably killed my rhythm a little bit was the uh, was the injury more so than anything against Girona when you miss so many games and you can kind of still feel li little bits of pain and aren't comfortable doing certain things. And finally I get over that feeling of um, the pain in my ankle and, you know, play against Valencia, score what I thought was a perfectly good goal and uh, get suspended. But I've said before, you know, I've got to be responsible for my actions and that kind of thing. But yeah, I think it's definitely affected my rhythm. You know, the one thing I had at the start of the season was I was playing every game consistently and I felt like um, it was very clear what I was doing and things like that. And then a, a few times uh, so far 
the last couple of months my roles changed slightly and you know there's been little things that I've had to kind of tweak and it means that maybe I'm doing a bit more work for the team which I absolutely don't mind doing but maybe I lose that effectiveness on the pitch and like I said it's up to me to try and uh, regain that and you know I'm, I'm confident I'm aware there'll be criticism I'm happy to take it on the chin uh, it's all about how you respond and I'll be looking to do that. Hi Jude, Paul Hurst from the Times. You Hola, Jude, moving Paul abroad Hurst. and to a new kind of Cuando vas a bring its own challenges in terms of otro país, the pressure difícil, of playing on the pitch and the changing culture, uh, language, etc. Um, obviously you've hit the ground running. How, how no have you adapted and what do you, you like most about being at the club? And, and the the club? Yeah, well, <sighs> there's countless things I could name about being at the club, to be honest. I feel grateful every time I go into trading and wear that badge on my chest. It's an amazing feeling. It'll never get old. And in terms of being English and playing abroad, you know, I was at Dortmund for three years as well. I maybe took a bit of a path that's a bit unfamiliar with uh, young players in England. And yeah, it's, it's, it's different, but it means that you learn a lot. And I can take a lot going back to the national team and things like that. But I'm really grateful for the opportunities I've been given in European football. I think maybe they wouldn't have been as accessible in England. And I feel like I've made uh, good decisions, thank, uh, thankfully, to my parents, my, my family, the people who I have around me. So, yeah, I think playing abroad is definitely um, a good idea for a lot of young English players. And hopefully, I'm showing that. Hola Jude, Miguel Ángel Díaz de la cadena Cupe. Hi Jude. Tu primera mitad de temporada como especialista fue realmente brillante, sobre todo también en el capítulo goleador. Registros casi de Cristiano Ronaldo y Benzema. You know, you almost had kind of figures up there with Benzema, Ronaldo, 16 goals. In the 13, last 13 game, you've not scored as many. What would be a normal figure for you at the end of the season? And if you don't score as frequently, does it make you anxious when you don't score so regularly? I think what makes me anxious is if I don't score them and the team don't win. I think while the team's winning and playing well, I feel comfortable. And I know that my game's more than goals. I think if you watch the games, you can see that. And, you know, it's, it's part of my game to try and add a wide range of skills and different assets to the team's game. Of course, I want to score goals. I love scoring goals. And especially when you get into the rhythm of it, you don't want to stop. But I understand that, you know, I can affect the game in different ways. Um, and, and, and that's it, really. I think I didn't expect to come here and score as many goals anyway but now that I'm here I want to keep taking that responsibility and try and score more um, in terms of having a target I've never really been one for that kind of thing mate to be fair I think I when I joined us people was asking me all the time and I just said that I want to try and start with one and see where that takes me so yeah um, I'm up to 20 now and hopefully um, I can get more before the end of the season Jude, Iván Martín de Oquí Diario. Yo te iba a preguntar, mañana juegas posiblemente tu Tomorrow, primer, bueno, no tu primer gran partido con el Madrid, pero sí el más grande eh, que has jugado hasta la fecha. ¿Cómo te imaginas ese partido y cómo te imaginas tu partido contra el Madrid? Yeah, well, hopefully the team wins. That's the first and foremost thing that I'm looking for. Um, everything is second to that. The team has to win, the team has to play well, and if I can contribute to that and add to that, then that would be brilliant. But, uh, yeah, that's the main focus for me. Uh, I want to try and, you know, be effective, have a have a good um, impact on the game, um, work hard, help the team defensively, offensively. Um, and, yeah, the, the, the most important thing is that we get through to the next round. And it'll be difficult, it'll be a tough game, but we've got to be prepared for that. And, you know, like I've said just then, uh, we're a great team in our own right, and I think that we have to show our qualities and be brave, and hopefully we can do that. Hi, Jude. Hi, I'm Jamie Jackson from The Guardian. Um, I know you weren't Jamie uh, Jackson last season, but... The team obviously lost 4-0 here in the uh, semi-final second leg. Can you use that as motivation? Does it matter? Yeah, I spoke to some of the lads that played last year and, and how it felt and, you know, they all have kind of similar feelings about it, that it, it wasn't nice. Um, I've been on the end of big losses as well and ones that feel painful, so you can understand their, um, their frustration, but I think you have to kind of regulate that emotion when you come into the game and understand that it's a new game. We don't start 4-0 down regardless of what anyone thinks. It's, uh, it's an even score going into the second leg. Um, and, and like I've said, we've got to be brave and come out to play. Um, yeah, the lads have spoke a little bit about it, but I think they're, they're all kind of professional enough to let that be the past and be ready to attack the next game.
Hola, ¿qué tal? Yo, aquí Ay, Juan Más Sánchez de, Juan de Radio Sánchez, Nacional. Radio Conoces Nacional. bien la, la Premier, al you know Manchester City, well. you know que es lo City más peligroso well. del equipo de Guardiola. Y hablas de mostrar mañana las cualidades Guardiola del Real plays. Madrid. ¿Con qué armas puede vencer mañana el Real Madrid? Gracias. Real Madrid used to beat City tomorrow. Well, I think it's the, the unpredictability of City. Um, you know, you try and focus on one player a little bit too much and they have ten others that can that can cause problems. So I think there's no point trying to take them individual for individual and see uh, what each person can do. I think it's about trying to attack uh, as a team and defend as a team and working uh, strategically like that. Um, Like I've said, como we need to be brave, we need to come out, be ready to play and play our game. Um, and obviously there'll be tweaks based on what they can do as well, but it's important that we remember who we are and go into the game with the, with the right confidence. Hola, Jude, ¿qué tal? Yo el del Rio de Hi, Jude, how are you doing? You've said that two months ago your role in the team has changed since two months ago. Has it been more of a systemic change? Where are you most comfortable playing on the pitch? Um, I think there's, there's been a few changes, it's normal, you know, when there's a lot of injuries like we've had this year and then you could try and adapt to different opposition, it's normal that the, that the coach tries to change the little things and, you know, it's important and it's worked, which is the key thing, you know, everything the coach has done this year has felt like it's worked really well. Um, for me, I've kind of shown that I can play in different positions and it's not about really picking one that's my favourite, it's about just kind of taking the information that I need to from the staff who are amazing and applying it to the game, you know, sometimes there's little things I'll be unfamiliar with and it may take me a little bit of time to get used to it, um, but it's about using those experiences like the first leg and like other games where I've had to make little changes to, to affect the game as much as possible and uh, that's what I'll try and do tomorrow. Te estamos preguntando mucho por ti, oye, por tu rendimiento you, y por tus goles, pero eh, cuando has llegado ha un entrenador que es Carlo Ancelotti que ha sacado de ti un rendimiento de locos, por lo menos a la hora de, de marcar. No sé qué nos puedes contar de, de Ancelotti, cómo lo ves, si es el entrenador que mejor ha salido y que encajarte en el entrenador. I think so, yeah. I think it would be fair to say that, you know, he's completely... I think the sign of a good manager is when you can make you believe that you're almost a bit better um, than maybe you think you were before and I think he fills me with that kind of confidence every day at training and in the games and he gives me the freedom to kind of roam the pitch and, and uh, be as effective as possible uh, not only that but he's a top person he makes you feel comfortable obviously it's a big move for me coming here with so many massive characters and so many big legends and I think he's been amazing in helping me adapt and yeah, basically making me understand my own kind of potential if you like, um, it's the first time that I've played maybe as more of a 10, I think in Dortmund I was uh, playing a lot deeper um, and then Birmingham all over the place, so I think yeah, it's um, definitely down to him why I've kind of had the start that I've had at Madrid this season and I'm really grateful for everything he's done for me so far. We're going to do two last questions, ultimate two questions. David McDonald from the Daily Mirror, surprise yourself. ¿Te ha sorprendido a ti mismo la velocidad que has podido adaptar y la influencia que ya tienes en el equipo? Normalmente tarda más tiempo para otros jugadores. Y también en términos de Manchester City, fue un equipo que estaba interesado en ficharte. ¿Lo considerabas en un momento o solamente había un club en que, para que querías fichar? Un par de preguntas. Yeah, your last one about the club. Yeah, I had a good kind of chat with the loads of clubs, including Dortmund, and you know my family were brilliant and helping me kind of chew up that information because it's difficult while you're still in the season to kind of take in the information and you know process it and then still have to go and play at a weekend or in the Champions League or whatnot. So. That helped a massive, uh, a massive deal, the support for my family. But yeah, I had good conversations with other teams. I just felt like as soon as Madrid came in, it was, it was a bit of a no-brainer, really. Um, the, the size of the club, the project, the plan going forward, the, the, the chance to play with such amazing players, I kind of just jumped at it, really. So yeah, that's, that's why I made my decision. And what was the one before, sorry? Oh, right. Yeah, and I think uh, bueno, that's just down to the team, really, the, the lads, the, you know, you can, I can pick out anything, you know, it's the staff, it's the guys on a day-to-day -day that you, you don't see behind the scenes, it's the football staff, it's the manager, it's the teammates, it's all those kind of things, the fans around the city, they make you feel really comfortable and, yeah, like I said, just so grateful for the whole Madrid, the city and all the staff here and the players have received me. Última pregunta, last question. Tatiana Mantovani, TNT Sports Brasil. 
Eh, quería preguntar sobre la conexión que tiene desde que ha llegado al Madrid con Vinicius y Rodrigo. Vinicius y Rodrigo. Eh, se espera mucho de vosotros tres mañana en el partido. Eh, quería que me hablaras un poco de cómo es tu relación con ellos. ¿Qué puedes esperar de ellos tres chicos en el partido mañana? ¿Y cuál es tu relación con ellos? No solo en el partido, sino en el partido también. I think in general we, we have a great relationship with, with all the lads, whether it be the senior lads or the young guys, but you know, obviously Vinny and Rodri I play with closely on the pitch and I think when everything clicks it's something that's kind of beautiful to play and you know there's been a few games where you know, we felt like we're all kind of at our best and it's just it's, it's beautiful to play with players like that to be honest, they make the job so much easier, they have so much quality, so humble, so kind of honest working lads as well which, which really helps and Yeah, I, I hopefully we'll continue to play well and score goals and win games for many more years. And yeah, it's a great environment in the team at the minute. And hopefully we can take it into tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you very much. Have a good one, guys. Este rendimiento para el partido de mañana. Muchas gracias, chicos.